welcome to yet another fabulous Linux Zoo crew. And today on the Zoo, we're talking about multimedia and DRM. That's Digital Rights Management, or as Stallman calls it, Digital Restrictions Management. But before we start today's show, I would like to share with you a few words from our founder of the Linux Distro community, Voltam. Hi, I'm Voltam, founder of the Linux Distro community. The Linux Distro community is a place for people to hang out and discuss Linux, Linux distros, software, and open source. The Linux Distro community is a community funded by its members for its members. We are a friendly, welcoming community that encourages people who use Linux operating systems and software to share their passion and knowledge with other people. We believe that when people share information freely, everyone benefits. We'd love to see you become a part of the Linux distro community. You can voice chat with us on Mumble or text chat with us in IRC. Head over to linuxdistrocommunity.com for details. Join in today in the sharing of knowledge and the freedom that a Linux operating system gives people. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Voltan. And before we start uh, today's show, I'd like to uh, pass the microphone over to Preacher, who is uh, one of the admins of the Linux distro community, and he's going to tell us about the August giveaway. Take it away, Preacher. We here at the LDC would like to invite all the listeners and members of the LDC to uh, jump on the forums, check out the latest giveaway this month, Ju or August the 15th. We're giving away a Samsung 840 Pro SSD. The only requirement you have to join the community, which is just basically filling out a username and password in the forums. And we would even like to encourage these people to tell their friends. The more the merrier. And we wish good luck to everyone. Absolutely. And, you know, the nice thing about the Linux distro community, I've never seen any other communities online that do such a nice thing for their members because we have uh, we have people who are giving away Steam keys for different games, and we've been announcing them here on the show. Uh, uh, I... Did say, do you know whoever won the uh, Left for Dead one? I know I got in on that uh, on that myself and uh, on the drawing, or has that drawing been uh, made yet? Yes, it was made the 31st of July. Teddy, 5090, and C. Smith were the winners of the Left for Dead. Oh, awesome. Jeez, I wanted to win that one. Oh, well, next time, you know, better luck next time. So definitely, um, you definitely want to check it out because, you know, the Linux Distro community is an excellent place that you guys can go to when you uh, need some support uh, because, you know, uh, it doesn't matter what Linux distribution you use. If you have a question, you need to get some help. You can join us here on IRC for live chat or you can also post your questions and comments uh, based on your distribution on our forums, and there's always people ready, willing, and able to help out. Okay, and before I uh, pass the microphone, I have an announcement here, and uh, Stripe asked me to announce this uh, earlier this week on the show. Apparently, uh, there's uh, an open rights group uh, that is running a campaign at this point, and I'm going to place this link on IRC, and for those of you listening on uh on YouTube. Uh, this link will be in the show notes. And apparently, uh, David Cameron is, um, you know, is sleepwalking the UK into censorship. And basically, uh, this is a plan to uh, have filters that'll block any site deemed unsuitable for under 18 year old people. And so there's a petition going on right now. It looks like 10,462 people have signed this so far. But this is yet uh, another, you know, you know, the governments are stepping in and trying to censor the Internet. So uh, here, let me share this link with you guys here, and then uh, we'll get this out uh, so that uh, any of you guys in the U.K., please uh, go ahead and uh, sign uh, that petition so that we can uh, stop censorship. And then uh, my next announcement uh, before we start tonight's discussion, uh, Iron Claw is on my panel here today. And uh, Iron Claw just started uh, some tutorials on his channel on YouTube where he's actually showing you how to get some pretty cool games, some popular favorites, and he's also starting a series on wine. Iron Claw, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, well, I just started my channel about uh, a week and a half ago, and I think I've got four videos up right now, and I'm still playing with the format, and of course, it's kind of fun because I'm not really an AV kind of guy, so um, it's it's been interesting trying to find the right tools for the job, but uh, 
you know, I'm adapting the format as I go along, um, you know, increasing font sizes so one lower resolution can see stuff. And uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to work on next, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of looking through stuff. Okay, and I will say, you know, um, the, the reason this caught my eye. Now, I, I know Iron Claw personally because we sat up all night here on Mumble, and we were uh, playing around trying to get, you know, there was one night we were trying to get, you know, multimedia, the, the right multimedia codec for getting Neverwinter's Nights to play videos in high definition, uh, uh, you know, do some crisp video and that sort of thing. And I, I found that he's a great collaborator. And uh, I actually sat down and watched his videos on YouTube. He really does doesn't have that many subscribers right now. But what really amazed me was how clear your instructions were. I mean, you know, I was able to read the commands you were putting into the terminal. You weren't really speeding through this. You know, um, everything was easy enough for me to understand. And I think this is great material for people uh, who want to be able to get some good classics and also some uh, pretty good free games that um, get some pretty good free games uh, you know, working under the Wine platform. So good stuff, good stuff. And you're welcome, Stripe. Uh, Stripe just thanked me for putting that announcement up. Okay, and uh, let's pass the microphone to Toss today, who will introduce us to the rest of our guests. All right, we have tonight Iron Claw, Matthew Moore, Preacher, Shaggy to Dope, of course, Spatry, and myself, Toss today. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the panel. And, of course, you know, uh, this is just one of them things that stirs a lot of people's pots, people who are running Linux distributions. You know, a common thing we have is multimedia and digital rights management. A lot of people complain, you know, we can't really get Netflix working that well in Linux, although I think they've managed to be able to uh, pull that one off, although I haven't tried it yet myself. That's the thing. You know, you install a Linux distribution, you don't have DVD support right out of the box. And then, of course, some other things is um, that, you know, maybe some people will want to have digital rights management technologies. For instance, Steam installed on their system. So we're basically going to be throwing around some things on uh, some of the things Windows has done where digital rights management is concerned and uh, the dangers of possibly bringing DRM to Linux. Okay, so first let's start out with multimedia on Linux, getting those DVDs to play, um, getting all those proprietary formats to work properly. And uh, we'll start with you, Iron Claw. Any tips for the best ways to get multimedia, t popular multimedia titles to work on a Linux system? You know, actually anymore, it's really easy. Um, you know, most of the popular Linux distributions come with either the codecs already pre-installed or a very easy way to install them. Um, you know, one of my favorite distributions is OpenSUSE, and it doesn't come with them pre-installed, but you can go to, you know, OpenSUSEGuide.org, and they've got a one-click installer that'll install, you know, practically all of the popular multimedia codecs for you um, automatically. And, um, you know, Ubuntu has their restricted extras. Um, you know, it's really not hard at all anymore. Matthew, how you doing, buddy? Pretty good. All right, so what do you th throw something into this mix here? How do you get your multimedia titles working in Linux? Well, just to add something, uh, Iron Claw there mentioned uh, the restricted extras on Ubuntu. That actually doesn't include the DVD playback for encrypted DVDs, at least Region 1 DVDs. You have to install the uh, CSS decoder library for that. But I always run, uh, at least on the Ubuntu based distributions, I run the uh, Ubuntu restricted extras the CSS libraries, and then I also add the Gecko Media Player, which is um, part of mPlayer, which has about 12 more um, codecs that you don't get with the restricted extras. And I find that to be the easiest thing to do on um, my distributions. Now, I've already heard some good things here because, uh, and you're right, in, in Ubuntu-based systems, yes, you have to install the DVD DCES CSS uh program separately and basically that tool is actually a hack because what it's doing is it's you know it's it's using a brute force to hack those DVDs to where uh, it can get them to play at least that's my understanding and somebody correct me if I'm wrong but I believe that's exactly what that tool is doing now um, and somebody also mentioned as well that some Linux distributions allow you to install everything you need within one click and it's my belief that 
Linux Lite has a script that does that automatically. Is that correct, Shaggy? Yeah, Linux Lite lets you uh, one-click install most everything to play back the normal, typical formats, MP3s, and etc. Toss today. I was confused. I thought DRM was a wrapper. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's I'm see. not even well, going to try and rap right now, but yeah, that that's funny. You got a rap for us? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> Boo. Uh, oh, shut up. <laughs> but anyway, getting back to this, uh, usually uh, with with the Zorin uh, OS downloads and Linux Mint, I think just about almost everything works out of the box. I don't recall testing DVDs immediately, but I think even that may work out of the box after, you know, downloading all the updates. But that's why, you know, for newbies, I recommend, you know, if you're starting off brand new, stick with the Zorin Linux Mint. Ubuntu is fine, too, but you have to go through the extra, you know, downloads, you know, with the restricted extras to get that working. And the CSS, uh, you know, we talked about for DVDs. But to me personally, because, you know, I, well, I guess I know what I'm doing most of the time. It's not an issue either way, but... Uh, for, you know, for newbies and beginners, that can be a potential problem. And if they're not aware of what's involved, they may download, you know, something, say Zubuntu, and it doesn't play their music. And that person may say, boy, Linux sucks. Of course, that's not true. Uh, but I think for all the um, people out there who are new to this, I think this this discussion is important, absolutely. But for me... Personally, I, I don't have a thought either way. Now, all of us uh, that are here on the panel, at some point or another, we ran Windows as our main operating system, some of us more recently than others. Okay, and a lot of the content that's, that's available out there today does have some form of digital restriction management or digital rights management to supposedly protect the artists. Personally, I don't think it's doing anything to protect the artists themselves. It's to protect the record companies and their investments in these artists. Okay, so for instance, you have iTunes, okay, which really doesn't run very well on Linux. Um, and this is a, you know, digital rights management platform. I've never personally used this myself. But it's my understanding that when you have tools like these installed on your system, okay, um, you can only access that content when you have uh, this DRM provider installed on your system. So let's say you want to get uh, Toss Today's DRM wrapper album. Okay. <laughs> My name is Toss and I'm the boss. I cannot floss. <laughs> Okay, we got a three-word wrap there. All right. So you got uh, the, the, the Toss Boss wrap, okay? <laughs> you, paid, you paid 99 cents for this piece of music. It becomes number one on the charts, okay? But the thing is, you paid for this piece of music, but you can only access it on one specific device in some cases, okay? And so now, if you want to listen to it on your Linux box, guess what? It's not happening, because you can't even run the DRM platform to sign into your account to actually use this stuff. Now, um, now I don't know how much they're, you know, really, you know, uh, protecting people or whatnot. I think, if anything, they're restricting people. How do you see it, Ironclaw? Yeah, I, I personally don't like DRM very much. It, in fact, it's it's just a big arms race between the, the the content producers and then the people who crack it. And unfortunately for the content producers, they just can't fire as often as as the 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 other side. And uh, really, the uh, the legitimate users who ends up paying for it because they're the one that's inconvenienced. The guy that's cracking it doesn't even know any difference. It's funny that you mentioned inconvenience, Iron Claw. We're going to get to that later. How do you see it, Matthew? Well, DRM, I agree. It, it only um, hinders the user. That's who ultimately pays the price for these companies trying to protect their own interest. And um, you mentioned iTunes. Uh, I've experienced an issue with iTunes myself where you purchase music on an iPod or iPod Touch, and you can't even get it off of the device 
onto your computer to even back it up because of this DRM. You have to use third-party software to break into it to get the music that you rightfully paid for. It's just, it, it's... It's absurd. You know, th these companies are too busy looking after their themselves to the point where they're actually hurting the end user as a result. Shaggy. You got companies trying to manage their properties, but what ends up happening at the end of the, at the, end of the day is you have a bunch of software being made that didn't need to be made. This is a waste of time for people to circumvent DRM and all these other sort of protection schemes. It's a complete waste of time. You're you're giving people music or movies, and you and they want to be controlled how they're used. But in the at the end of the day, guess who has the most control? The people who don't legitimately buy things. It's a, a shameful thing, and no one recognizes that. They just want control, and they can never actually have it. You, the more control you try to tag on something, the less control you actually have. Toss today. I have no pr problem with companies, you know, protecting their, you know, properties. But how much is too much? Where Where is the overkill factor on this? And I would have to agree, I don't use iTunes. I don't want to get involved with that, you know, try to, you know, move my music from, you know, one computer to another and, and, and all that's involved. It's, it's very annoying. And, uh, you know, for myself, you know, I, I like to keep it simple. You know, uh, last month, uh, back in June, Father's Day, my son got me a $20 gift card for the music store. I bought uh, three CDs that were on sale. I ripped them, my PC, and then I, you know, I took the MP3s and moved it on to my Galaxy S4. No fuss, no mess. Uh, I don't think I cheated anybody. I mean, I paid for the stuff, but that's how I usually do it. And I think there should be absolutely nothing wrong for making backup copies of music that you paid for. Okay, and uh, Matthew also um, made some comments on IRC, so I want to hand the microphone uh, over to you before we step in Spatry's way back machine here. Uh, go ahead and share with us what you shared on IRC, Matthew. Well, one thing that I wanted to point out is because uh, these companies try to restrict this content so deeply, uh, it ends up uh, basically putting digital handcuffs on the user and ultimately these users will seek other um, f uh, ways to get their content and in a way it kind of promotes piracy. These companies are trying to protect their interest by limiting what the users can do with it but it actually kind of backfires. It has the reverse effect because users want to do what they want to do with their content and if the DRM content isn't doing it for them well, they're going to get it from some non-legitimate means, so they can do what they want with it. Tell me about Podworks Platinum. Well, Podworks Platinum is a third-party um, piece of software that uh, it's mostly used for iOS devices, which will actually go in and pull what's rightfully yours on the device to your PC so you can do what you want with it. Um, the DRM that's on the iOS devices is so strict that, I mean, stuff that you purchase and download on the device, it's locked down so you can't even put it on your own PC. It's it's pretty extreme, and Podworks Platinum is a way that you can get around that. But the DRM does stay there, um, but it will allow you to use it in iTunes and back it up um, for whatever purposes you need. Now, this has been a proverbial cat and mouse game uh, between the uh, between the uh, content distributors and the consumers um, since as long as you know we've the consumer has had the ability to make their own recordings so let 's all step into the way back machine let 's go back thirty years okay and uh, thirty years ago, people bought their albums on vinyl and uh, these stereos would have a built-in cassette deck. Okay, so you'd go out and buy your favorite record album, let's say Kiss, for example. Uh, yeah, that's Kids in Sunday School, right, kids? Gotcha. All right, so... <laughs> so you got your favorite Kiss album, you pop it on there, and then you fire up your tape recorder and you record a copy and you give it to your friends to share. Okay, and this is a big thing, you know, that... that and so the record companies, you know, they're working on me mechanisms to prevent people from doing this. And I mean, as long as we've had the ability to be able to, you know, record an audio file. All right. So 
let's just say, all right, so you got that iPod Nano, you went and you bought um, the latest Ozzy Osbourne album. Okay, I know that's a poor example. He hasn't put out an album in a couple of years, but um, all right, so you bought the, the Ozzy Al- Osbourne Scream album, and you decide, okay, well, let me hook this up to my stereo and now make a cassette recording or actually make a DVD recording. Isn't that a way to bypass this, or do they now have technologies in place to prevent you from playing into another machine to do the recording you know um, because they have some mechanisms that do that how do you see that toss looks battery isn't this like um, kind of like a cat and mouse game uh, yeah exactly that's uh, I think I even said that earlier it's just a cat and mouse game here right so I mean look the the, the uh, technologies are, were there are there to code decode compress uncompress do this undo that it's you know with the internet as your world library you can do anything so it's almost like what's the point of putting these drms you know on these movies and music Uh, i mean i mean i understand where the companies are coming from uh but you know really can you stop it in my opinion probably not Especially when you've got file sharing platforms like uh, you, you have the Pirate Bay online, you have a number of these other torrenting websites where people have uh, stripped the DRM from these uh, contents and then are allowing people to download them through BitTorrent. But there are companies that are fighting back. They have their machines connected to these BitTorrents. And what they're doing is they're reading the IP addresses of everybody connected and then they're attacking the uh the uh you know the provider so for instance if you have xfinity you know they're contacting xfinity okay all these ip addresses belong to you these people are downloading copies of our music without paying for it yada 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 and then of course xfinity has to go out and start sending naughty notes to uh everybody bad boy don't do that otherwise we have to cut your service how do you see it iron claw well, you know, I'm I'm definitely not for piracy. In fact, I I respect copyright um, a lot as as a free software and open source advocate. I have to because that's how you know our entire software platform works uh, through copyright. So I don't pirate things. Uh, I have been known to download copies of things that I already own. For instance, if my uh, my CDs have a uh, bit rotted to the point where I can't read them anymore, but you know, as long as I've got that original CD, I don't see a problem with doing that. Matthew. Um, I agree. I, I think if you have the original content and you can show that you've paid for it, then I, I'm under the belief that you should be able to do whatever you want with it if you can show that you did legitimately pay for it. But again, like I said before, because these restrictions are so strict in some cases, it, it pushes people to commit piracy. Uh, So maybe this whole DRM thing, maybe it needs to be rethought of how they do it. I'm with you on that one. I don't see anything wrong with, you know, obtaining a backup copy of content that you legally paid for. You know, and if you can prove, you know, that you legally own this content, uh, then they shouldn't be able to do anything to you about it. But Uh, You know, that's a touchy little subject, but let's go ahead and move on to gaming now because they, you know, there are companies that really went to the extreme where uh, digital rights management is concerned. Now, um, many of you Linux users here are using Wine, and of course, to get some of your Windows games and applications working, or mostly games, you know, you have to actually go onto a site to get a uh, patched executable file that does not search for the CD because the Linux file system doesn't read the CDs the same way that a Windows system would read it. And so even if you had a legitimate CD and put placed into your system, it would not be able to recognize it and allow you to run the game. So you'd have to use a patched executable in order to get that running. We'll start with you, Iron Claw. Yeah, I've had to do that in a few cases. Um... Sometimes you can, you know, simply make an ISO image of the disk itself, and it and it will work just fine. Um, a lot of the times, you can convince the games not to look for the CD at all, even without a patch. Um, let's see, Star Lancer was is the only one I can think of right off the top of my head that I actually had to go get a cracked executable to get it to run um, because it just refused to without a CD. Um, and I, 
I'm trying to remember which scheme they used. Uh, and I get off the top of my head right now, but uh, you know, most of them don't really seem to have that problem. But you know, I'm I'm still going back through my my back catalog of games now. Yeah. Now, um, there are a number of them that would actually install a driver on your computer, and uh, two of the most no no notorious ones were the Star Force and the Tages. And basically what these would do is they would install a driver on your system and uh, a number of people have reported, now this has not been proven, but a number of people have reported that uh, that they were, uh, that they, that their, uh, that their optical drives would perform substandardly. Sometimes their systems would crash. And actually during the week before uh, starting this, I did some research on these and I couldn't believe the number of people that had filed complaints about this kind of thing happening. Let me give you an example. I purchased uh, X3 Reunion when it first came out and that used Tages as its uh, DRM uh, platform. And, well, unfortunately, the game would only install on my computer once. I've never had that happen. And actually what I ended up doing to reinstall the game, I kept the physical discs and I went on to the Pirate Bay, I think, or Demonoid, or one of those BitTorrent sites, and downloaded a pirated copy of the game, even though I legitimately paid for it because I could only install that game one time. And a matter of fact, that game came on like six discs. I think it took like 45 minutes to install on my system. You know, uh, of course, and again, my system wasn't a race winner at that time. But, I mean, it was really disheartening, you know, uh, these technologies they're using. And some of the other ones that, were, that are out there that are still in use today is SafeDisk, SecureRARM. CD Cops, we've talked about Star Force, and then the Tages. And um, now, the nice thing, though, is a lot of these game developers, especially Agosoft, who made the uh, X3 series, they eventually released a later patch which would remove the game protections from the discs. They just had the content protected for the first year while that game was released. Uh, we'll pass the mic over to you, Matthew. Did you have any problems with any of these uh, types of device drivers or any uh, digital restrictions management in your Windows gaming career? Well, I've never had any issues with um, drivers um, causing problems, but I have had situations where some games uh, would require uh, some third-party software tools in order to execute without the um, disk inserted. And some of these, in my experience, uh, have been malicious in nature. Um, not necessarily in terms of messing with drivers or hardware, but just malicious software in general. Um, and to touch on the, the wine situation with this being an issue, um, I really haven't had to run any patched uh, executables for that. Um, usually um, copying the disk into an ISO has worked for me in the past. Now, something of benefit for those of you who are trying to get uh, Windows games working, there are some legitimate games that you can purchase that were originally released with these protections that are now on um, goodoldgames.com, or GOG.com as I call it. And I like GOG.com because I've had a very high success rate with getting those games running natively under Wine. And uh, so those are instances there where you don't have to download a cracked executable and that sort of thing. And I really don't see anything wrong with downloading a cracked executable uh, if, if you need, to, if that's something that you need to get working uh, on, uh, on your Linux system. Now, I know Toss today doesn't do any gaming, so I'm not going to pass the microphone over to you uh, on this particular thing. But... Um, uh, where DRM is concerned in the Linux world, uh, we have uh, Desora and Steam. And these are gaming clients which allow you to purchase your games and that sort of thing. And I just want to get uh, your impressions to us today. Um, would you, did you embrace something like this? Do you feel that there's room in the Linux world for digital rights management where gaming is concerned? 
Well, first of all, uh, let me just say that the roller coaster ride that I take with video drivers in Linux kind of prevents me from, you know, trying more games in Linux. But if, sure, I, I would have no problem DRM and Linux gaming. Look, if persons or persons spent the time out of their lives to create an, you know, an exclusive or a wonderful game, they should have every right to protect the rights uh, to that game. So if I was a gamer on a PC, I would have no problem with, you know, a game being uh, DRM protected. Just as long as I, just as long as after I downloaded it, I wouldn't have any trouble, any trouble playing it due to something, something in the DRM. Other than that, I wouldn't have a problem, no. Now, Iron Claw is a big time gamer on uh, Linux. So uh, I, I'm really interested in knowing your point of view on this one. Uh, well, you know, I do have a Steam account, and I've, I've bought a few games. Um, and the DRM there seems to be basically that I have to be logged into my Steam account, and I have to be online to, get, to make it work. And that's mostly harmless, uh, and I don't mind it too much. Um, I don't have a Dursura account, I, I will have to say. Um, I guess I don't really have a problem with Steam because of how it works. Um, it it's okay. Um, you know, good old games. I, I absolutely love them. You know, they're they're all DRM free, and uh, it's definitely helped me uh, fill out my back catalog with with some of the games. You know, because um, fortunately, some of those games are 20 years old, and you know, the discs have bit rotted to the point where I can't even read them fully. One thing I like about the Steam platform, though, is uh, they've been bringing a lot of games to Linux, and many of them at a very reasonable price. I mean, they're always having sales. And then, of course, you have the Humble Bundles where you can uh, purchase Steam keys, to uh, you know, and you name your price there for those games. And so, I mean, I've got a huge library and many games that I haven't even had time to even try yet, you know. And the nice thing about this is some of these games, and I've tested this, now, some of you may not get the same results that I did, but I have found I was able to actually launch some of those games without having Steam running on my system. I was actually able to go into, uh, you know, where the games are stored and uh, be able to execute them. But then again, it's probably just checking to make sure that I have Steam actually installed on the computer first, you know, uh, before uh, letting the games run. Uh, in this case, uh, the X series, because uh, uh, I know my account is inaccurately showing the number of hours played, because sometimes, you know, uh, I had links directly to the executables, and they seem to work quite well for me. And I haven't tried that since those games came out of the beta phase, though. Uh, but um, I'll, I guess I'll, that's something I'll have to revisit that. And uh, Matthew, do you see any room for DRM on Linux? Uh, sure, I don't have a problem with DRM, only if it doesn't uh, hinder the end-user uh, experience with the games. As long as they can still use the games in a manner that suits the end-user, then I don't really have a problem with it. Shaggy! When you talk about DRM... Uh, or uh, whether or not DRM has a place on Linux, it does if it's done right. With the res with respect to the Linux mindset, you have to really just sit down and think. We want to know what's going on. Most Linux users really want to be able to fiddle and mess around with uh, what's going on and want to know what's happening. If they introduce d more DRM schemes to Linux, it needs to be a little transparent. Explain what's going on. Don't make it so secretive, and be respected. I think Steam is speaking uh, a lot to everyone when you're able to uh, sell these games on Linux, and people are fine with the way it works. It's good. some of the games have a level of uh, DRM. I'm not sure how far yet, but it's it's working great. It's okay if people want it. It's it's uh it helps Linux in general. That's always the biggest selling point. More games, more users, more users, more Linux. And at the end of the day, we all switched to Linux for one reason or another. Maybe we just wanted to have a secure system that's free of Windows viruses. Maybe we just wanted to have a platform that we could customize to our liking and allow us to balance our workflow in the way that we wanted to. Okay. But the thing is, we did end up having to make sacrifices. Yes, for a long time, we did not have 
a native Netflix client, and I still don't think it's quite native yet. I imagine it probably won't be long before we see you know, Netflix eventually getting a native client on Linux. At least that's something I would like to see. And I would like to be able to see, you know, Linux being able to have all of the great things, you know, in terms of uh, content management systems that, uh, that the Windows counterparts have. Uh, but the thing is, at the end of the day, it's about security for me. I want a nice, secure system that's reliable, that will run for days and weeks on end without having to reboot, you know, and just having a reliable system is most important to me. But, yes, I, I would like to be able to go on Netflix one night. There's nothing on TV, you know. There's uh, I, I've seen everything that interests me on YouTube, so now I want to see something a little bit different. It would be nice to have a Netflix client. I'm glad we have Steam now because now they're bringing some of my favorite games, and they're bringing new games every day to the Linux platform. Then, of course, the Humble Bundles, although I will admit I am upset at the Humble Bundles uh, this week because all of their uh, offerings are for Windows only. It would be nice if they had Yay! at least one game. Yeah, I love you too, Toss, today. It would have been <laughs> nice to see them have at least one game for Linux uh, in this bundle, but apparently, you know, uh, the, the uh, developer or whoever put this bundle together decided not to uh, participate in that. And, oh, well, it is what it is. Uh, any final thoughts, Toss, today? My name is Toss, and I'm full of moss. I'm at a loss. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Claw, any final thoughts? I think I've pretty much said what I want to. Matthew, any final thoughts? Not really. Just uh, as long as these companies do DRM right, I really don't think it'll be an issue. But that's the real question, isn't it? Who's going to do it right and who isn't? Well, I think Steam is on the right path there. <laughs> you know, they have a good platform and... Um, it's not using too much, too many resources, at least on my system. I'm very pleased with it. So, uh, and hopefully others will follow suit. Shaggy, any final thoughts? At the end of the day, DRM or not, you have do have a choice in what content you get. There are a lot of services out there that sell music. Not always necessarily the best and most popular artists. They haven't gotten the deals like they have with iTunes, but there's places out there that don't have DRM, and it's always a good option to seek them out and buy from them even though they might not have everything. And there you have it. All right. Um, I want to thank Iron Claw. I'd like to thank Preacher, Matthew Moore, Shaggy Two Dope, and Toss today for joining us on the zoo. Uh, for those of you who want to be kept up to date, every time we have a zoo crew episode, all you need to do is go on G+, and uh, get in my circle. I am Spatry Spatry on G+, and I will notify you every time a zoo crew episode is coming up. I don't do these every single week, but I do post that as an event, and you will get notifications and let you know when these zoo crew episodes will be coming up. And uh, uh, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us. Looks like we had a great turnout this week. Thank you, all of you in the listening room. We will have links in the show notes. Be sure you get on LDC and sign up for your chance to win that Samsung solid state internal hard drive. I understand it is one of the best on the market. So you'll definitely want to uh, check for that. And of course, check out the other link in the show notes. Prevent that censorship to the internet in Great Britain. That's all we've got for now. Thank you all of you and we will catch you next time. Today's show was brought to you by the Linux Destroy Community. Visit us today at linuxdestroycommunity.com and chat with us on Mumble or in IRC on the Freenode Network in the Linux Destroy Community channel. The Linux Destroy Community. Freedom through the sharing of knowledge. Mm -hmm.